Welcome to This is Getting Old, Moving Towards an Age-Friendly World. I'm your host, Melissa Batchelor, and on today's episode, we're going to be talking about colon cancer and when to get your colonoscopy. So I turned 50 this year, scheduled my colonoscopy. It was this morning, which is why I have my glasses on, and also woke up to the news that France has now called for a ban on the nitrate additive for ham and charcuterie. And actually, in looking into that, the World Health Organization has considered red meat and processed meats uh, cancer causing since at least 2015. But you may also remember um, Chadwick Boseman, who played the role of the superhero uh, Black Panther. He died at age 43 of colon cancer. So while most people think colon cancer is just a diagnosis for older adults, the rates of colorectal cancer have actually been falling for older adults, but they've been rising for younger adults. So the first thing I want to address is what is colon cancer? So colon cancer is a type of cancer that begins in the large intestine, which is also called the colon. And this type of cancer is sometimes called colorectal cancer, which is a term that combines the colon and the rectum, but the cancer actually begins in the rectum. So the colon is the last part of your digestive system. And so this type of cancer typically begins as a polyp, which is a clump of cells that form on the inside of the colon that are usually small, usually non-cancerous or benign, but over time, these polyps can become colon cancers. So number two, who's at risk for getting colon cancer? Well, like I said, colon cancer typically affects older adults, but it can happen at any age. So here's a quick list of things that might increase your risk of getting colon cancer. So number one, older age. The majority of people are over the age of 50, but like I said, the rates of colon cancer have been increasing in younger people. So last year, they actually changed the age to start screening to 45. Second, African-American race. African-Americans are 20% more likely to get colorectal cancers, but they're also 40% likely to die from it than any other racial group. So if you're African-American and you're in a high-risk category, which we're gonna talk about in just a second, you need to talk to your healthcare provider because they may recommend starting you earlier um, even as early as your 30s. So number three, personal or family history of colorectal cancer or polyps. So if you or anyone in your family that's a blood relative has had a polyp or colon cancer, you're at greater risk and you should start screening earlier. Number four, an inflammatory intestinal condition such as ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease can increase your risk. Number five, a low fiber, high fat diet. So this is the typical Western diet. But research studies have, they've actually had mixed results. So some studies have found that an increased risk of cancer um, happens in people who eat diets high in red meat and processed meats. And so this is why the news announcement from France um, came out today is because of the nitrates that are added to those products. Number six, sedentary lifestyle. So not being active increases your risk. So you've got to move it. 10,000 steps a day should be your goal. Number seven, being overweight. A healthy BMI is um, a BMI of less than 25. That's considered to be a normal weight. And I'll put a link in um, the blog and in the description for this video for a calculator to help you figure out what your BMI is. A BMI of 25 to 29.9 is considered overweight, but over 30 is considered obese. So really need to make sure we keep our weight where it needs to be. Number eight, smoking. So smoking tobacco has been linked to all types of cancers for a really long time but that also includes colon cancer. Number nine, alcohol. So moderate to heavy drinking increases your risk, but even light to moderate alcohol intake has been associated with some risk increase. And number 10, a history of radiation to the abdomen or your belly or your pelvic area to treat a prior cancer. So those are the top things that, that increase your risk. So what are some of the symptoms of colon cancer? So you should see a doctor if you have any of these symptoms. If you have a persistent change in your bowel habits, so this could be having diarrhea or having constipation that's different from your norm or a change in the consistency of your stool. So you do have to check um, to make sure that you know what they're looking like because the second symptom is rectal bleeding or blood in your stool. Number three, persistent abdominal discomfort. So this could be in the form of gas, cramps, or pain that doesn't go away. Number four, a feeling that your bowel isn't emptying all the way. Number five, experiencing weakness or fatigue. Or number six, unexplained weight loss. So for any of those reasons, please go see your healthcare provider. So when and how often should you get a colonoscopy? And this is actually a question I was talking with my mother-in-law um, about uh, actually earlier this week when I was telling her that I was going to have um, a colonoscopy. 
Um, you may not have any symptoms of colon cancer, so this is why screening is important because they need to remove those polyps before they um, turn into cancer. So for an average risk person, and when I say average risk, that means that you don't have a personal or family history of colon cancer or polyps. You don't have a personal history of inflammatory bowel disease, no hereditary syndromes or the history of radiation. So if you are not, if you have not had those things, then you're considered average risk. So for those people, you should start screening at age 45. And this can be a stool-based test that's done in the office or a visual exam that looks at the colon and the rectum, and that's called the colonoscopy. So that should start at age 45. It should continue um, every 10 years, as long as you're in good health and you have a life expectancy of more than 10 years. And that should happen until you're 75 years old. From 75 to 85, you can decide if you want to be screened based on your overall health, your life expectancy, and your prior screening history. And when you reach age 85, screening is no longer recommended. But again, that could also be based on your overall health, your life expectancy, and prior screening history. So what can we do? What can we do to reduce our risk of colon cancer? So while you can't change your age, your race, or your genes, there is still some good news. In fact, there's a lot that you can do to decrease your risk of colon cancer in the form of lifestyle-related factors. So the link between your lifestyle, which is what you eat, drink, your weight, and how much you exercise, all of those have a stronger link to increasing your risk of colon cancer than any other type of cancer. And so that's important. So number one, you need to maintain a healthy weight, get that BMI 25 or below. Number two, exercise most days of the week. So this means getting at least 30 minutes of exercise by taking a quick walk, um, anything that you can do to increase your steps and your goal should be um, to get your steps up to about 10,000 steps a day. Number three, stop smoking. It's never too late to quit smoking, so talk to your healthcare provider about ways to quit, and I've included a link to some resources to help you do that. Number four, drink alcohol in moderation. So for ladies, this means one drink a day, and for men, you get two. And number five, eat a diet with a plant slant. So you want to eat a variety of whole grains, vegetables, fruits, and nuts, and typically um, what i tell people is if you can recognize the food for what it is, if it comes in its own original wrapper, those are the types of foods that you want to eat. Pretty sure I learned that on either Sesame Street or Electric Company as a kid. So now I'll tell you about my personal morning. I'm getting my own colonoscopy. Um, this actually started on Sunday when they told me not to eat vegetables, fruits, or nuts. On Monday, did the clear liquid diet and started the prep last night and continued it this morning. Went in this morning, um, checked in. They took me back, started an IV, took me back in the room. Um, told me that they were going to put me to sleep. I watched them put the medication in my IV, and then I woke up in the recovery room. Um, after about 10 minutes, they let me go home. And of course, the first thing I did because I love to eat is I went to get lunch. So overall, it was not a bad experience. And so if you are 45 years old, um, please contact your healthcare provider and schedule your colonoscopy. And if you're in a high risk group and you're younger than that, please um, get in there as well, because this is a cancer that can be easily treated and fixed if we can catch it early. Thank you for listening today. Thank you for tuning in to This Is Getting Old, Moving Towards an Age-Friendly World. I'm your host, Melissa Batchelor, and if you'd like to learn more, you can check out my other episodes on my YouTube channel by either by subscribing and ringing the bell to get immediate notifications when new content comes out. In addition, you can also find the audio version of the podcast on Amazon Music, Spotify, iTunes, and Stitcher. Please feel free to leave an honest review because more reviews mean more awareness of the podcast and helps us move towards an age-friendly world. If you have a comment or a question, you can visit my website, melissabphd.com. Go to the Contact Melissa tab and you can leave me a voice message. You never know, it might just include your question or your comment in an upcoming episode.